Some say longtime fishermen tell the best tales, but they're also famous for stretching the truth. Sitting around Sitka, you'll hear stories of millions of dollars of herring piled into one net. Sets so heavy they topple boats and take days to empty. Mega bucks made in a matter of minutes. In Sitka, they don't need to stretch the truth. I don't think there's anything quite like the intensity of, of uh, the Sitka Sacro fishery. Um, it's a very competitive fishery as it sits right now. A mad dash for cash. Dozens of boats race towards Sitka Sound. Sacro fishery will occur in approximately one minute. One minute, stand by for countdown. When the Alaska Department of Fish and Game gives notice that the Sitka Herring Sacro fishery is about to open, tenders, saners, and planes spring into action. 45 seconds. They're jockeying for a prime spot because location means the difference between a net of gold and a water haul. Five, four, three, two, one, open. The Sitka Sound Sacro Fishery is now open. This is the Alaska Department of Fishing Game on Channel 10. Oftentimes, the fishery is only open for a few minutes. The word competitive doesn't even scratch the surface. 50 boats have permits to fish the herring, plus there are over 60 tenders out here collecting the fish, and that makes for close quarters. It's not uncommon to see boats bumping each other out of the way. Spotter planes crisscrossing as onlookers cringe. It's every boat for itself, but this year there should be more fish to go around. The department set a record quota of more than 19,000 tons of herring. It's kind of a double negative. You know, this is fantastic that the biomass is here, you know, but on the other hand, if the economics of the fishery aren't there, you know, it's, it's, if it's already hard to sell already, it's going to be really hard to sell a lot of it. You can come in any time, start hooking up while we're doing the sample. There were fears going into this season that the price wouldn't be great because some fishermen say there were still leftover row from last year. The money's real light, you know, there's, you know, it's hard to squeeze blood out of a turnip, so to speak, you know, you, if, if nobody's willing to pay for it, nobody's willing to buy it, then it's, then it's hard to sell it. But just as the fleet was ramping up for the season, a hit nobody expected, a devastating natural disaster struck its primary customer. It's become a different focus. I mean, you know, we were going through to having like the herring discussions. We had just finished our crab season. A lot of our product went to Japan and then preparing for herring. And then we had this take place. And all of a sudden the focus went off of the product and onto the people. Herring roe is a delicacy in Japan. Buyers fly to Sitka every year to inspect the quality. Our customers will come to Sitka. I'll show them our facilities. I'll show them Sitka because this is my hometown. And uh, I really uh, like to brag Sitka up, if you will. But I'll, I'll take them by my house and I'll introduce them to my wife and my kids. And so we've really grown a very personable relationship where I always say we're the company with a pulse and a face. Almost half of the permit holders fish for Silver Bay Seafoods. The company is in a tough spot right now. It's stuck between the fishermen who hope to get a good price and their customers who are dealing with tragedy. Our focus has been on achieving our goals and setting our goals high to maintain the things that we can control and then uh, you know, work with our customers and our relationships that we have with our customers to uh, see where things end up, end up at, at the end. I mean, we're, we, we trust our customers we, just like we trust our fleet and our fleet trusts us. Japan is also a major customer of salmon roe, black cod, and crab. But for now, most people just want to focus on the fate of their friends and business partners in Japan. You know, there's still, uh, you know, a lot of lot of unknowns, uh, a lot of devastation, and certainly, you know, our hearts go out to our Japanese customers. But really, you know, they become our friends too. Okay, Leroy's phone. You got 55. Is that correct? Man, I'd be a happy guy if I did. No, I have 10. 10 tons, so, you know, 55 total approximately. Roger, roger. Thank you. Right now, all the fleet can do is fish and see what happens. 
but many are also casting a wider net this year. You know, and, and thank God right now squid is taken off and that's mainly a Chinese product. You know, Japan kind of buys the high-end squid, but it's mainly Chinese. And so as a fisherman, you try to offset, you know, sometimes you take the good with the bad, so to speak. Yes, there are plenty of questions about the future, but just like when you go fishing, it's not always smooth sailing. Sometimes the waters are rough and the nets come up empty handed. But a longtime fisherman will tell you it wouldn't be fishing, it would be catching if they didn't have all the obstacles standing in their way. You know, we'll take it one step at a time, just like the people in Japan are doing, taking it one step, one, one step, one day at a time.